So in this first video of a two-parter, I'll show you how we can use virtual buttons to turn on and off objects with Vuforia. And then in a later video, I'll show you how to start an animation. So we have two different virtual buttons in one scene. So let's get started. First of all, I've set up a project here in Unity. It's Unity 2020, so the long-term support of Unity. Currently, the project is empty. Normally, what you would do to get Vuforia is you would go to the Window Package Manager. However, it's not available right now in the Package Manager, so you will have to go to the Vuforia website to get it from there. So the procedure here would be going to developer.vuforia.com, clicking Downloads. You might need to log in and then you can download the Add Vuforia Engine to Unity project. As soon as you've downloaded it, it should pop up with this very small import thing. It just adds a script that will load the Vuforia Engine, so import. So when it is done, you should be able to, inside of packages here, see that it has imported the Vuforia Engine AR. This is the newest version of Vuforia Engine, so that's the 9.8 version. Next up, what you would need to do is you need to set up a license and a target. We've set up this in a previous example, so I will just copy paste my license from here. And my targets are currently these. For targets, I'll be using the Lacy marker. So what you will do here inside of the sample scene that I have open here, you could also rename it. You would start by deleting the main camera. You would right click, go to Vuforia Engine and add an AR camera. Just leave the name as it is and then go over to the inspector, click the Open Vuforia Engine configuration. So inside of here, you would have to add your license key. So copy paste the license key from the website. And that's basically it for setup. If you have a webcam attached to your computer, it might also be a good idea to scroll down to the play mode and check if it's set to webcam and if it has any type of input that you can use. So next up, what we need to do is we need to set up our image targets. But to be able to do that, we actually need the database first. So this is where we would again go to the website, we'll go to the target manager here, and we'll download this database. Make sure that you download it for the Unity editor and not for the Android Studio. As soon as you have that inside of Unity, it'll just prompt you with the import setting again, click import. And now what you can do is outside here in the sample scene, you can right click again, go to Vuforia engine and add an image target. So this image target should automatically detect that you have a database. So select from database, you can find your database with the different markers that you have. I'll use the lazy target. So if I zoom into my image target here, you can see that I currently have my target visible right here. Now let's add a object that we want to spawn in. So any object that you want to spawn when it recognizes the marker needs to be inside or as a child of the target itself that you're using. Select the target, right click, go to 3D object and let's just add a cube here. I will rescale the cube so that it doesn't take up the entire marker and I'll have it float just above the marker itself. Next up what we want to do is we want to add a virtual button. So if you click the image target itself you can see over here you have an advanced tab. If you unfold advanced you can go down here where there is a button called add virtual button. When you click the add virtual button it'll create the virtual button right here, which is in the center of my target currently. So I'll move it down into the corner here. You might want to scale it up, that dependent on your marker and where you want your button to be. So now we actually have a virtual button here in the scene already, meaning that we can actually already start activating stuff. What we need to do is we need to set up a name for it. We'll just call it VBTN number one, so virtual button one. The sensitivity can be set to high, medium, or low. Let's start out by medium, but it'll depend on the marker itself and the tracking points, so contrast points on the marker. So it's something that's dependent on the specific marker that you have. So next up, we need to set up a script. So this script needs to be on our target. Click on your target, go to the bottom, click add component. This script I'll call VBTN, so virtual button. Hit enter twice and it should add the script. When it's done adding the script, you can double click it and it should open in Visual Studio. So this is where it starts to differ a lot from the original way of doing it. So first of all, we need to use another library. So using Vuforia. So in this case, we would like to spawn in objects, basically just turning them on and off dependent on if we have our hand covering the virtual button or not. So let's set up a public game object. And let's call this one cube for now. We can always add more to this, but cube is what we'll be starting with. Next up, we also need to load in our virtual button. So public and this is called a virtual button behavior. And we'll just call this VB for now. Let's go to the start and inside of start, we want to make sure that we register these button presses that we might have. So we'll say VB dot register on button pressed. And for this, we will set up a method that we wanted to run when the button is pressed and we'll just call it on button pressed. So it says an error right now because we haven't set up the method further down. We'll do that in a minute. We'll set up another one that is called register button released. And here we'll also add a on button released function. So we don't need the update, meaning we can just delete that one. And we'll set up a new function here. It's going to be a public void. And this is going to be the on button pressed. And inside of the parameter here, it wants a virtual button behavior. And that's just VB though. That's the local variable VB. The other one is with capital V. Curly brackets here. And what we'll be doing here is we'll just set the model to active. So we'll say cube, which is our name of our game object dot set active. And we'll just set that to true. And now we can basically just copy paste this method here and just rename it to released. 
And instead of it's true, it sets to false. So right now we also know that when we start the game, we can actually see that the model is then active because it activates with the tracking marker, meaning that we'll just set it to be off by standard. So up here, we'll say cube dot set active parentheses false just to make sure that it's off by standard. That's basically what we need to be able to spawn in different objects. So we'll save this for now and we'll jump back into Unity. So here inside of Unity, you can see that our script has updated. It wants to know which game object the cube is. So we'll just drag the cube down into that game object. It wants to know our virtual button. So we'll take our virtual button behavior here and add that as well to the VB. And this is basically everything you need to know to make virtual buttons work. This is how you target them and check if they are pressed or not. And as you can see here, we can see our tracking marker and I can move the camera around nothing really happens. As soon as I take my hand here and I cover up the virtual button, you can see it spawns in the object. And if I move my hand away again, it also then despawns the object. So it turns it on and off. In the next video, we'll just try to play an animation with a secondary virtual button so we can activate with one button and then play with another one. See you in the next one, guys. And thank you for watching.